Working independently, it takes Machine X two hours to complete one quarter of a certain job. If the rest of the work is finished by Machine Y, which has a rate of one-fifth of Machine X's, how long does it take for Machine Y to finish the work? Well, that seems sufficiently confusing. But remember, regardless of how confusing the question is, we know one thing for certain. Rate times time equals work. OK, now let's see who is doing the work. Uh, we have a machine X. We have machine Y. Do we have it together in this one? I'm not spotting it. Nope, just machine X and machine Y. All right, so what is it that we're being asked to find? How long does it take for machine Y to finish the work? How long? So we need Y's time. All right, what do we give it? Let's see. Let's go back up to the top. What do we know about machine X? Machine X is doing one quarter of a certain job, so machine X's work is just one quarter. And how long does it take machine X to do one quarter of this job? Well, they tell us, two hours. Now, if we know that machine X's work is one quarter and machine X's time is two, well, we can totally figure out machine X's rate because rate is just work over time or one quarter over two, which is the same as one quarter times one half or one eighth. Remember, the goal is always to get everybody's rate. All right, we've done a great job with X. What do we know about Y? Well, let's see. They tell us that Y's rate is one-fifth of machine X's rate. Of means multiply, so that means Y's rate must be one-eighth times one-fifth or one-fortieth. Well, we have a rate. We are looking for a time. If we get a work, we can figure out what time is. And what do they tell us about machine Y's work? Oh, the work is finishing the job. Remember, finish has a very particular mathematical translation. It means the total job minus what's already been done, or in this case, one minus one fourth, or three quarters. Y's work is three quarters. So that means that Y's time must be work over rate, or three quarters over one over 40 which is the same as 3 quarters times 40 over 1. We do some fancy crossing off with the 4 and the 40, and we get 30. All right, nice job. Let's try another one. Francesca can paint 3 over x of a house in 24 hours. What fraction of the same house in terms of x? Can Bruno paint in 24 hours if the two of them can paint the house together in 6 hours? I got to tell you, I really don't understand what any of that means. But we do know one thing for certain. Rate times time equals work, and that is a tremendous advantage because the way these questions are designed, all of that confusing language must be able to find a place in this framework. So we're just going to allow the framework to guide us through the question, and we know what to do next. We pull out who the players are doing the work. We have Francesca, we have Bruno, and we have together. OK, great. Next, we always pull out what we're being asked for. What fraction of the same house in terms of x can Bruno paint in 24 hours? Well, what does that mean? Well, it means we're talking about Bruno. And if we're talking about Bruno, they can only ask us for one of three things, rate, time, or work. And what is it we're being asked for? Let's see, how much of the house he's painting? We're being asked for Bruno's work. We're also told that we are going to get that work in terms of x. And what that means is our answer is going to be some kind of like crazy math phrase with a bunch of x's in it. That's OK. All right, so what else are we told? Let's see. For Francesca, we know that she paints 3 over x of a house. Do I have any idea what that means? No, but we know that's her work, so we're going to write it down. Now, how long does it take Francesca to do 3 over x of a house? Well. Apparently, it takes her 24 hours. You know what? If we know Francesca's work, 3 over x, her time, 24, we absolutely can figure out her rate because we know for sure that rate is simply work over time, or 3 over x over 24, which turns out to be 1 over 8x. Now, if this algebra is a little confusing to you, this same question appears in the companion guide, and we go through all of the algebra step by step for you. OK, so what else are we told? 
Well, you know what? We have a bunch of information about them doing this job together. They can paint the house, so one house, work is one, in six hours, so time is six. Hey, if we have work and time, we know their rate together. It must be one-sixth because rate is always work over time. Okay, so where are we at? Well, we've done a pretty good job. Let's see though, I'm pretty lost in this question, don't know exactly what's going on, and we don't have everyone's rate, and that makes me itchy. Whenever you're lost in a, in a work rate question, you wanna get everyone's rate. We have Francesca's rate, we have Together's rate. Can we get Bruno's rate? Hmm, how would we do that? Well, let's see. Hey, do you know what? We know for sure that Francesca's rate plus Bruno's rate must be the together rate because we know we can add rates. That means that we can use the dun-dun-dun Lego inference to figure out Bruno's rate because Bruno's rate must be the together rate minus Francesca's rate must equal Bruno's rate or one-sixth minus one over eight X must be Bruno's rate. Now, if you do the algebra on that, you are gonna find out that Bruno's rate is 4x minus three over 24x, of course it is. I have absolutely no idea what that means, but that is Bruno's rate. We know that for sure because we know that we can add rates together and Francesca plus Bruno must equal the together rate. If that algebra for Bruno's rate is confusing, perfectly understandable, again, this question appears in the companion guide and we do all the algebra step by step. Okay, so we know Bruno's rate and we know Bruno's time too. We are told he is gonna paint for 24 hours. If we know Bruno's rate and Bruno's time, we can figure out Bruno's work because work is simply rate times time. So we're gonna multiply 4x minus three over 24x times 24. Turns out the 24s will cancel and we have 4x minus three over x. Do we have any idea what that means? I don't, but I know for sure that that's the answer because the framework is never wrong and we've simply used the logic of the framework to guide us through the question, even though the question really doesn't make any sense and that is the power of these frameworks. All right, let's try another one. An automobile plant has two machines that work together to assemble transmissions. Machine A takes X hours to assemble a transmission. Machine B takes Y hours to assemble a transmission. In terms of X and Y, how much work does machine A contribute? This seems very confusing with a lot of variables, but are we intimidated? We are not. Why? Because we have an excellent framework that is always right. So we always write rate times time equals work across the top, and we pull out what is doing the work, and in this case, it is machine A, machine B, and together. All right, next thing we do, pull out what we're being asked. In terms of X and Y, how much work does machine A contribute? We're being asked for machine A's work. We're also told that we're gonna get that work in terms of X and Y, which means we're gonna end up with some like crazy math phrase full of X's and Y's. That's fine, that's, that's okay. All right, so what are we told? We are told machine A takes X hours to assemble a transmission. You may be tempted to put X under time. Don't do it. Why not? Because X represents the number of hours it takes machine A to build a transmission if machine A were working completely alone but A is not working alone. We are told that the two machines work together. So instead of being given time, we have very cleverly been given A's rate. A's rate is one over X. Same thing for B. We're told it takes machine B Y hours to assemble a transmission. Well, that's how long it would take machine B to assemble a transmission if it were assembling it all alone, but it is not assembling it all alone. It is working together with machine A. That means we have also been given machine B's rate as one over Y. I know, very clever, unfair. The English is incredibly slippery. Yeah, the test likes to do that. All right, 
Well, now that we have machine A's rate and machine B's rate, we know what their rate is together because we know for sure in work rates, we can add their rates. So together, it must be 1 over x plus 1 over y, which happens to be x plus y over xy. Now, does that together rate make any sense? No, not really. I don't really know what that means. But we know for sure it's true. Why? Because the framework is always right. Now, I know we're also dealing with a lot of variables here. So let's actually step through the algebra real quick so you can see how this works. So we are trying to add 1 over x plus 1 over y. That equals something. We know that when we add fractions, we multiply through by the common denominator. And in this case, that is xy. And we multiply the entire equation, left and right sides, through by xy. We do our fancy crossing off. And we end up with x plus y equals question mark times xy. Then all we do is divide through by xy. And that's how we get x plus y over xy. That is their together rate. Well, we also know how much work they're doing. They are assembling one transmission. Hey, if we have a rate and we have a work, we can figure out a time because time is simply work over rate. So their time together must be 1 over x plus y over xy. All right, this is a common kind of algebra situation they like to put you in. Whenever they put 1 over something, it's actually pretty easy to clean that up. All you do is get rid of the 1 and flip the denominator on its head. So in this case, 1 over x plus y over xy equals xy over x plus y. That means that xy over x plus y is the time it takes them to do one transmission together. Does that make any sense? Well, yeah, again, not real sure what that means. But we know for sure it's true. Why? Because our excellent framework is always correct. And now we're almost home. Because if we know that A's rate is 1 over x, and we know that the time that A is working is xy over x plus y, we can figure out A's work because A's work is simply rate times time. So we will multiply 1 over x times xy over x plus y. The x's just cancel, and A's work is y over x plus y. Wow. A little slippery, totally understand that. And I want to remind you that everything we've been doing here, super hard, the upper level of difficulty. So if you're able to get through these, and you will as you practice, you are going to be mastering some of the hardest stuff on the test. And in fact, as you master work rates, you are going to find that your ability to manipulate lots and lots of other quant questions are going to go up because the skills you're learning right now in order to do these questions are things that you will apply across the test. Okay, so be patient with yourself and you're going to do great.